Many people think that reading these poems that I'm brainwashing them. Well, that is certainly the case. We are washing the mind. We are asking questions you have probably never asked yourself. The mind needs to be crystal clear. Our minds are muddy. When we were born, they were crystal clear. Over time, we forgot our true nature. Meditation and prayer is a means to clean the mind. It's like taking a shower every day. We get dirty and a shower feels so good. The shower of love is medicine to the soul. This is why the great master said, discover your true nature. Ponder this over. You can solve this mystery. Here are some basic questions to ask yourself. Who am I? Where did I come from? Where will I go when I die? Is there a purpose to life? What is keeping me alive? Where is God? Ponder this for a while. The answers lie within. To ponder it over means to think it over. When I was young, I didn't truly understand the concept of ponder it over. I would say, let's get to the facts. We can brush it over. Yet pondering makes the mind go within. It helps connect us to our higher selves. It enables us to connect where we can be open. To ponder something over is to stir the pot. When the soup settles, the answer comes to the surface. Pondering is a way to connect to something far greater than yourself. Have we forgotten why we should ponder in our life? If so, why? Are we so distracted in our daily affairs? We miss out. We have forgotten our true nature. I like the wine that I have become. I started out as grapes a long time ago. I started looking inside many years ago. My ego was crushed time and time again. Life crushed the grapes. It was a great learning experience. I'm always learning. As we age, we can become like fine wine. We have weathered through many storms. Our skin may be weathered, yet our soul is still young. We are eternal. I'm at peace with myself. That is a great feeling. Does life throw you a curveball? We are all in the game of life. We are playing the game. We have a coach that is God. He is on the sidelines. He is rooting for us. Unfortunately, we don't know that he is there. Life throws us a curveball and we go into a tizzy. The great masters of the past taught how to hit a home run when a curveball is thrown. We must go within and find the inner coach. It's always been there. We have free choice to open the door or have the door remain shut. Ponder the meaning behind the words. Have you ever asked the question, who am I? Are you only this body? If you say yes, then what is keeping you alive? You say, my breath. Well, what is the power behind your breath? When you die, you stop breathing. What power left you? You are no longer alive. Your body is now a corpse. <clears throat> Did you know that your body is hardwired to solve this mystery? All the great masters have said, look within. You are the universe. You just don't know it. The mind is a mirror. Whatever you see in someone is a reflection from your mirror. Whatever faults you see in others are faults that you have. Whenever you point your fingers towards someone, you have three fingers pointing back towards you. 
The great masters have said, clean your mirror. It is dirty. You can't see clearly. Your mind is tricking you. You think if only that person would change, my problems would go away. You must change, then the problems will go away. We, as a society, must change ourselves. Our mirror needs to be clean. Ponder this message. Your understanding of life will change. You can't change anybody except for yourself. Have you ever been bitten by a mosquito mind? The mind itches and you are bothered by something. Yet, you don't know what it is and you feel all centered. You can't pinpoint what's going on. Did you know that meditation and paying attention to the itch will soothe it away? Meditation will help focus where the itch is. Once you can see it, if you, if you can focus on it, and embrace it. Once you embrace it, it will disappear. The Buddhist was an original psychologist. They have been studying the mind ever since Buddha was around. They are experts in positive mental health. Did you know it was only 30 years ago did Western psychologists study positive mental health? We need, as a society, to have a positive mind. How the world would change for the better. Throw away the anger. Your anger is like throwing kerosene on a fire. Your anger is only hurting yourself. Facebook lately is full of anger. It's full of frustrations. How do we go beyond our anger and yet talk about the problems that face us in the world today? How do we talk like mature adults? How can we talk like when we are all united? Yes, we have different points of view. How can we talk without putting someone down? If all of us would stop being so angry, maybe we could calm down and see different solutions. Peaceful solutions. We can all do this. Anger is not the solution. What is the true nature of the mind? Before a person begins to meditate or contemplate, most likely the question is never asked. Most people would say, I'll, I never asked that question. Yet, that is probably one of the best questions you could ask yourself. What is the true nature of the mind? Have we discovered it? All the great, <coughs> great masters have taught about it. Why do we have so many mental problems? Is there a correlation between the mind and body? Have we forgotten our true nature? I'm missing something inside. <coughs> I don't know what it is. Why do I feel happy about obtaining something and six months later I could care less about the object I attained. Why do I feel <coughs> like, a, like there's a small mosquito is inside my mind? There's a small constant irritation buzzing in my mind. Why do I act so irrational? Why do I fly off the handle so easily? Have I learned that getting angry at someone that is only harms myself? These are practical questions to ask yourself. Only you can solve them. You are a genie. Whatever you think, you become. If you get angry easy, you will be an angry person. If you gossip about people, they will gossip about you. Whatever you think, the genie responds. The more you think, and take actions, the genie responds in an instant. <coughs> you can control the genie. You can control your mind. You can control your actions. Stop, look, and listen. Your genie can be your friend. It's your choice. 
Do you want to be a reactive being or one who is a co-creator of God? Ponder these words. The world will be in a better place. Many people think that this path is boring. Oh, I have to give up my lifestyle. No, you don't. In order to see God, you must be poor. Nope. Keep your money. I don't want to be celibate. You don't have to. I don't want to be a monk. You don't have to. Be yourself. Yet here's a few things to give up. Give up your anger. Give up your intolerance. Give up your lack of patience. Give up your evil ways. Give up all your negative emotions. Each one of you have things to give up. You and the world will be in a happier place when you do this. Have you ever tried to meditate? Are you up for a challenge? Did you know that taming the mind is the most difficult thing to do? It takes determination, patience, and kindness. Just sit for one moment and concentrate on your breath. Focus on the incoming and outcoming of your breath. There's something that is keeping you alive. At first, the mind will be like a monkey. It will jump from branch to branch. It will jump from thought to thought. Over time, a stillness will enter you. Thoughts are all around, yet you are in the center of the, of the hurricane. Chaos is around, yet you are still. Sit still and listen. Your journey has just begun. Is this from a mystic or a scientist? Kabir, a mystic from the 15th century, said the following. All know that the drop merges into the ocean, but few know that the ocean merges into the drop. <laughs> now that is profound. A modern day Einstein might have said that today. The entire universe exists inside of us. We are a part of the universe. Is this a paradox? We are beyond time and space. There are billions of universes. <coughs> inside of our DNA is a part that is not material. It is spiritual. No instrument known to man can detect this yet. Yet the mystics have said all along, you are hardwired for this experience. Ponder this message. The divine words from Kabir are a lie. means eager to know or learn something. <clears throat> I've been curious all my life. My mom and dad taught me the adventures of ethnic food at such a young age. It still continues today. That curious nature never goes away. In fact, it actually increases the more you get older. I remember <clears throat> that you can't rest on your laurels. In the 90s, I built a dome automation for the observatory on Maui. I didn't know C++ yet. <clears throat> I was extremely curious and knew I could pull this off. When I finished it, I thought they might give me a few days off. Nope, it was on a Friday. I was back to work on a Monday. It was a huge accomplishment. My curiosity was one thing that got me to learn how to meditate. I read books on the mystics and wanted to know what they were talking about. It seemed like a foreign language. So I persevered and was curious about this adventure. It was love at first sight. I had a knack for this. 
Yes, nobody gets a free ride, but I had a knack for this meditation. It came easy to me. I think we need to approach life like a curious child. Never lose that. If you do, plant the seed in your heart and water it daily. Your curiosity will grow. The definition of adventure is the following. Engage in hazardous and exciting activity especially the exploration of unknown territory. I remember as a kid, I took a yoga class. At that time, yoga was relatively unknown in America. Yoga was around during the late 1800s, yet the majority of the population thought it was on the fringe. It was definitely on an unknown territory. This love for adventure took me all over the world with a surfboard in my hand, a backpack on my back, and a yearning to discover my true nature, I was off. I had quite the adventure. I learned the greatest adventure lied inside. This is truly unknown territory. You can live anywhere and have a simple life, but by exploring your true nature is the adventure of a lifetime. Lock a person up and put them in solitary confinement and see what happens. The greatest adventure is to tame your mind. That is probably the most difficult thing to do. Mystics have been talking about this for thousands of years. Today, yoga is mainstream. Millions of people practice it. Maybe, maybe something is going on. We are slowly learning more about life. I love the definition for, for forgive. Stop feeling angry, resentful towards someone for an offense, flaw, or mistake. Imagine a person does you wrong. You have every right to be angry. Time passes and the person who wronged you has forgotten the situation. But you haven't. The anger is still festering within. The poison left by the arrow lies inside of you. The moment you truly forgive yourself and the other person, true alchemy occurs. True healing can take place. This is the law of forgiveness. It doesn't say you must forget the experience. The law says to forgive big difference. As a world, we would truly be more content if we forgive ourselves and others. Learn from your mistakes. Forgive yourself and others along this journey of life. some definitions of ego. A person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance, a boost to my ego. For psychoanalysts, the part of the mind that mediates between the conscious and the unconscious and is responsible for reality testing and a sense of personal identity. For metaphysics, conscious thinking subject. Our ego can be man's best friend or his worst enemy. We have seen that for thousands of years. <coughs> In the Buddhist tradition, they have studied the mind and ego for thousands of years. They have learned practical tools to cultivate the ego and mind. Imagine a farmer planting the seeds 
and going through the process of the final picking of the crop. Mystics have taught the same inward farming. You can cultivate the mind and ego to be a true reflective nature of ourselves. This is the greatest thing we can do for ourselves and the world at large. In fact, you can't take anything with you when you die. But you can take the fruits that you have cultivated with you. Imagine you are a conscious thinking subject inside of a human body. You are the universe. You just don't know it. One definition of the word root is as follows. The basic cause, source, or origin of something. So that definition in place, what is our origin? Where do we come from? Is there a place where we come from where when we are born? Is there a place we go to when we die? What is the root cause of all? Can you know? our origins when we are alive? There are many questions we have about our roots. Ponder this message will make you think where you came from. I don't get it. Why do you meditate? Isn't that a waste of time? Why do you want to know yourself? I know who I am. Why should I care if I'm trying to improve myself? I simply am what I am. Who cares about the other person? I have what I need. Let's party on, rock and roll. There's no tomorrow. This is what I've heard over the years. Did you know the universe considers you as your best friend? You are never alone, yet at times we think we are. You are a part of the universe. There is a part of you that is beyond time and space. Unfortunately, we have forgotten. You are the great mystery of life. It is hidden inside of you. Is this truth? or fiction. Only you can decide. Solitude is a state or situation of being alone. To a mystic is a state of freedom. For a prisoner, it can be a state of hell. Why does one love solitude by some completely dread it? Is it a state of mind? Is our mind our friend or foe? They say the hardest thing to master in the universe is mastering your mind. There's a lot of truth to that. All the great teachers from the past said the same thing. When I first started to meditate, my mind was overbearing. It took a few hours at times just to settle, settle into the experience. Many moons later, the mind has become my friend. It's, it still can be a brat, but the mind is at ease most of the time. Solitude is a way over time to calm down the mind. You can't break down the door. This is a simple and natural process. In the end, Patience wins out.
Here's some definitions of ego. A person's sense of self-esteem or self-importance, a boast to my ego. For psychoanalysts, the part to the mind that mediates between the conscious and the unconscious and is responsible for reality testing and a sense of personal identity. For metaphysics, a conscious thinking subject. Our ego can be man's best friend or his worst enemy. We have seen that for thousands of years. <coughs> In the Buddhist tradition, they have studied the mind and ego for thousands of years. They have learned practical tools to cultivate the ego and mind. Imagine a farmer planting the seeds and going through the process of the final picking of the crop. Mystics have taught the same inward farming. You can cultivate the mind and ego to be a true reflective nature of ourselves. This is the greatest thing we can do for ourselves and the world at large. In fact, you can't take anything with you when you die, but you can take the fruits that you have cultivated with you. Imagine you are a conscious thinking subject inside of a human body. You are the universe. You just don't know it. The poet Rumi once said the following, when someone beats a rug, the blows are not against the rug, but against the dust in it. <laughs> when we go through the ups and downs of life, remember, we are not alone. Struggles and beatings of life are meant to clean ourselves. They make us become stronger. They help build character. How can you truly have compassion for your fellow man if you never experience hardships? Life is truly a video game. This game appears so real. We even feel pain along the way. The beatings are not against us. We do not get punished by God. Yet life has its lessons to learn. We come onto this earth to grow and love all of life. We are all on the same boat. We are all on the same journey. All of the great teachers in the past spoke that we are all the same family. We have forgotten our true nature. Life tries to wake us up from our slumber. You are the universe. You just don't know it. When I was young, I loved baseball. I once heard a story that Ted Williams didn't go to the movies because it said it would hurt his eyes. He had exceptional sight and reflexes. You had to be if he had many seasons when your batting average was over 400. He didn't party, smoke, or drink. I'm sure many people thought he was a fuddy-duddy, yet he was the best of the lot. He paid attention to his craft. Maybe he was baseball's mystic. He turned baseball into a, into a science and an art. He had complete devotion to the game. He did not get sidelined by the many distractions of life. He just loved to play the game. He was the best of the best. Many famous ball players need to look at his devotion to the game. Pride and Eagle was in his game. He did not need to show off. He had nothing to prove. Sounds like a mystic to me.